call the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order. Oh, we should do, we should do the minutes first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any changes or additions, Sarah? No. Okay. Approve the minutes of September 18th, 2023. Need a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from September 18th, 2023. Second. I have a motion and a second. So that's uh, John did the motion and Chris did the second. Um, just a reminder, when you come up to the microphone to speak later on, um, we have someone new, Bonnie McDermott, who's here uh, in play. She's working with Judy, but Judy's not here tonight. So when you introduce yourself, make sure she can understand you. And we we know a lot of you, but she may not. Thank you. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, minutes have been passed yeah, from yeah. September 18th. Yeah, Laura. Well, I'm sorry, Laura. Yes. Thank you. Um, October 16th. Minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from October 16th, 2023. Second. So Don made a motion. Chris seconded. seconded. Uh, any discussion? Just one second. Okay. Okay. All set. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Laura? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I think we're ready to move on to the agenda. Thank you, Sarah. Do we need to make a motion to adjourn the, the Liquor Control Board? We're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> Um, so there is a liquor license application for Lost Nation Brewing is um, for their third class license. Okay. Have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. So Chris did a motion. Richard seconded. Any discussion? Jason, are you good with this? I'm good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We have a tobacco license application. It's for um, Sling, Slim Point LLC, which is Riverbend Market down at Warren's. Um, it's for a tobacco substi um, substitution, substitute endorsement. So vaping products. Oh, uh, okay. A motion. I'll make a motion to accept the application from Stone Point LLC. So Don made the motion and I'll second. second. It was a tie. <laughs> okay. I'll third. I'll third it then. So Richard got the second. And uh, any discussion? We're good, Jason. Good with that one too. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a. Um, a request to cater permit. It's from Black for Black Diamond Barbecue on December first, <clears throat> from five forty-five to ten fifteen at MSI for their holiday party. An estimated two hundred people. <coughs> Have a motion. So moved. Motion by Chris. Second. I'll second. Second by Richard. Any discussion? Jason seems to be fine with it. So. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Go I'll, ahead, Chris. Oh. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Good. Second. Got a, got a motion from Don, a second from Chris to adjourn the meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Thank you. Liquor control is been adjourned. Moving on to the select board meeting. Um, We've had the changes in any additions to the agenda? No additions, just we're going to delete number 12. Okay, thank you. Um, approve the minutes of October 16th, 2023, the public hearing. I would move the uh, minutes of October 16th, 2023 for the special meeting. Motion by Chris. Is there a second? A second. Second by Richard. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes approved. Approved minutes of October 16th, 2023. I would move the select board minutes of October 16th, 2023. I'll second. Motion by Chris, except second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes approved. What, uh, approved minutes of October 23rd, 2023. I would move the minutes of October 23rd, uh, 23. Motion by Chris. I'll second. Second by Richard. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion uh, minutes have been approved. Approved minutes of October 25th, 2023. I move the minutes of October 25, 2023. I'll second. And a Chris, uh, motion by Chris, second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Laura, you also? Yes. Okay, thank you. We didn't get, I, I assume you approved the minutes from 2023 also. I didn't yes, I'll, I'll make it clear if I uh, don't, sorry. Okay, thank you. New business, approved errors and emissions certificate. Number one under new business. Uh, just to generate the discussion, um, I'll make a motion to accept the errors and emissions certificate as presented. I will second that. Um, <clears throat> and a motion from Don and a second from Richard about um, moving the errors and admissions certification. Um, any discussion? Yeah, the only discussion I have is, but I, I think it's kind of obvious. These aren't two separate forms, they're just forms that run from one page to another. Got so it. they're all taken collectively. <laughs> I didn't understand the part about, um, maybe I don't have to. Um, the $40,000 veterans exemption was removed. So the, I believe it's four of them that are all that? Yes. And basically that means there's different cases, but I know what it is. Before you go, can, I'm sorry. can, Laura, can you hear? Introduce yourself. Yeah, why don't you stand up and introduce yourself? Sorry. My name is Brian. I am the head listener. Thank, Thank you. you. The, the four veterans exemptions were all properties that in the past had had a veterans exemption which doesn't affect the true value, which is why you see zeros there. But we have learned through death certificates, other things of that nature, that those people are no longer living there, therefore don't qualify for the exemption. So they have to go on the E&O sheet as now being the exemption being shut off. So the state has a record that they are not getting the $40,000 exemption for being a veteran. Oh, okay. thank you for You're explaining welcome. that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to number two, discuss taking over Dr. Tinker Street as a town road. Um, is this something that is Todd going to be talking about, or is this something we're just going to be talking about amongst ourselves? Talking about it amongst yourselves. We do have uh, some people here from Copley Hospital who are the ones requesting that this road be taken over by the town. We got Tyler Mumley. And then we have Mark Sutton, uh, Tyler is the engineer, and Mark's uh, with the facilities to our Minicopoly. Want Tyler to come up and you want to start? Come up? Sure. Yeah. Just make sure you introduce yourselves again. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Tyler with Mumble Engineering. So I've been working with uh, Copley Hospital um, on some other various projects, but uh, was working with Mark on this project to help them essentially have the driveway to Copley Terrace uh, be taken over by the town. So uh, he started on this process a couple of years ago. <coughs> He's been through some uh, steps to get there. Uh, and then this past summer, we uh, worked to try to get that done and um, learn that the, the rules had changed. Um, so that included not taking over dead end roads. Um, however, uh, there is a allowance that says that you, the town can take over a dead end road if it provides access to a 
town owned land. Uh, and so the idea was that we could provide a right away. And everybody needs to be the out Okay. So, uh, and there's a, we propose to have a right of way extend from the end of the driveway that goes out to Copley Terrace and extend into um, the, essentially the uh, Copley Golf Course property to provide potential access to that property. Therefore, <coughs> fulfilling the, the requirement to allow the town to take it over. Um, and we provided uh, one of the old surveys that shows where the right of way would extend um, out to the Copley property. Um, and we've, like I said, Mark and, and Copley Hospital has worked with the town for the last couple of years to get to this point. Um, and this dates back to working with Dan Lindley when he was the town administrator. And Mark can give a little bit more color, but um, we had actually scheduled to meet out there with, with uh, Kevin. Uh, to talk about how to extend the road a little further in order to get it to the 2000 foot minimum, which was the previous requirement. Uh, and then doing so learn that uh, the rule change and that it, had, that it had to access the town owned land. Uh, that's when we came up with this plan and submitted that. And so here we are asking uh, for the town to take that over, which would include, you know, a right away for future access uh, to the Copley Golf Course property. I don't know, Mark, if you want to add anything else. <clears throat> so I'm Mark Sutton. I'm the director of facilities at Copy Hospital. So I'll just add a little background so folks understand. So like uh, Tyler said, I started working with Dan um, and uh, whoever the um, road commissioner was at that point. And no. um, I know the, this is better. No, no, no. that's only for the uh, recording and for Zoom. on Zoom. So it's only for Zoom. Any any speaking you do in here has to be projected yourself because oh, the microphone no, doesn't. Bring do my it. outdoor voice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Sure. So I, as I said, so I've been working with the town uh, management for uh, since 2001 to try to take over that section of the roadway because it supports more than just the hospital. So. Um, and working with the town manager and the road commissioner, whoever those folks are, I think I worked with two different road commissioners uh, during that time frame. Um, they told me what I needed to do, and we followed all those processes. We reground the road, we reground the sidewalk, we repaved everything, and then we went back and they said, the road doesn't meet the length requirement. So I said, okay, what does that look like? So they said, you need to extend another 150 feet. And I'm like, okay, so I started working through that. Um, then this last time they came back and said uh, the rules had changed again. Uh, now it, we don't take on dead end roads. However, the road commissioner said I needed to uh, re uh, rework the light pole bases up the road, which we took care of all of that. So every time I try to move this thing forward, it, it comes up with another situation or concern or whatever. And, and like Tyler said, I mean, we met with Kevin out there looking at what we needed to do, it came up about, you know, granting access potentially in the future to the golf course. And I'm like, I, I will do whatever to try to make this thing move forward, whatever that looks like. So we're not proposing to put a roadway into the golf course. We're just allowing the capability in the future if that's what the town so desires. We're just looking at trying to get that road taken over by the town. Um, that's that's what I'm trying to do. And we came, I don't know, a month or so ago yes. and get the, the, the uh, actual street changed yes. to to meet the town's requirement for streets. So we've, we've done that. So this is the next step. <clears throat> I don't know what else I can say. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Thank you. Okay. Judy, can I ask a question? Yes, sure. So um, this may be more for Tyler. Um, in November 1st, 2015, it appears that the select board um, stopped taking over dead end roads. Um, and the provision in there is I understand what you're saying about primary ac primary access to a public property. Um, I, my question really is, is that it, it is not a primary access to that public property because there's another drive into the golf course. And this is a projected potential easement across that property is that correct Correct. it doesn't currently exist right so the status of the road is truly a dead-end road 
Right. 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 So, you know, to sort of drill down to it, um, I empathize with where you're at because you've gone through now three iterations of here's the finish line, now here's the finish line, here's the finish line. Um, I think that as custodians of, of um, all things municipal, um, it seems to me that we're trying to color this, color, color this into a position where it's providing a primary access to a public property. And in my estimation, it's not because there is a direct driveway into Copley, uh, Copley um, Country Club. This, this easement doesn't currently exist, nor is it, I guess, proposed during the permit process. So it's still a dead end road. And I guess that's my statement is, is that, you know, we're either equal under the law or special under the law. And I think this would make this special under the law. And I think it sets a precedent for this board and future boards if this public highway ordinance stands to color outside the lines. And I, I, I don't think it's appropriate at this point. And I, again, I completely empathize with where you've been. So if I can just add, so. It, it has been very unclear from the leadership in this town as to what I need to do to make this happen. They should have just told me this in 2001 that this can't happen. So we've spent a lot of time and energy and money to make this happen, and, and now here we are again. So that, that's all I have to say. But it's been incredibly frustrating, yeah. challenging, yeah. <laughs> maybe frustrating too. So I and, I, and I and I don't know. Yeah. I I've been on the board. This is my sixth year. And I wasn't aware of all the iterations you had gone through. Mm. So, um, and I'm really sorry that you've gone through all of these processes to get where you want to be and possibly be turned out. Right. Well, and, and thank you. I appreciate that. I just, it would be helpful to know what I need to do if, if I can do anything. Yes. And if I can't, I need to know that too. I'm making an assumption that yeah. people were sharing with you what the steps you needed to take to make the road be taken over by the town, um, but it didn't mean that that was necessarily going to happen, even if you jumped all through the hoops. It, so I agree with that, but in the communication, email communication I have with the administrators, they they said in their emails, if you do this, they, yeah. they don't see any reason why this wouldn't pass through the select board. And I know that they can't speak for the select board, I totally get it, totally get it. I'm just, I just need an answer. Can we, can we move forward or can we not move forward? That's what I really need to have. Okay. Because I, I'm going to keep coming to you <laughs> if I if somebody doesn't tell me no or or stop. Right. So. so what we've done in the past is we've done a motion and a second and opened it up for discussion. Do you want to continue that process to do it that way? You can do that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So. I'll make a I'll make a motion that we that the town of Morristown take over Dr. Tinker Street as a town road. I have a motion by Don. I'll second it second for conversation sake. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's open for discussion. Now, any discussion? Okay, so we have some people in the back who'd like to speak. I'll exit. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Karen Otterino, A-U-T-O-R-I-N-O, and um, I'm the chair of the Board of Copley Country Club, and I prepared a few remarks. Um, I, as the chairman of the Board of Copley Country Club, I would like to register our opposition to the proposal that Dr. Trinker Lane be extended to abut the property on which the golf course it resides. First and foremost, I would like to say that while the driveway is a town road and failing in sections, the club has not requested that the town repay the driveway. It's clear that in this budgetary climate, the last thing the residents of Morrisville, who have seen a major increase in their property taxes, need to see is a town spending money to repave the road to the country club. We are keenly aware of the optics of this situation. In the past, I've had conversations with Eric Dodge when he was working for the town regarding ways we could get some areas patched by the town road department. We both agreed that a total rebuild of the driveway would be more costly than the town could afford at the time, 
And that was actually before all the budgetary issues of the past year. It appears to us that the hospital's attempt to get the town to take over and maintain Dr. Tinker Lane so that they can save money has created a situation where it will cost both the town and the golf club money. The proposed $50,000 expenditure on extending the road that was in some materials that were sent to you, um, which we think is an extreme underestimate of what it would cost to actually build that road, um, and having it planted and adjacent to our first fairway would cause a huge liability issue. Cars driving up to the dead end road are right in line to get hit by a pulled tee shot. So some sort of screening would need to be made by us, whether it's trees or netting or what have you, that um, would be an issue for us. And then to address the future plans on this sheet of paper that was sent around to everyone, um, to extend Tinker Lane to the clubhouse, it would cost tens of thousands of dollars to redesign the golf course to accommodate a new driveway. We're a small public course and we work hard to keep membership fees as low as possible so that golf can be an affordable recreational activity to members of our community. We work on a tight budget requiring us and requiring us to redesign the course would cost us money that we don't have and it would risk shutting down the club. We therefore respectfully request that the select board reject this proposal. Thank you. Uh, Jamie Jarrett, I concur with what Karen has said, number one. Number two is to, to take on another road when we have roads that are in disrepair or as they are now, and to incur more uh, expenses is ludicrous. And I, I, I feel for the hospital, I, I, I feel for the, all the work that you've done, but the reality is you were steered in the wrong direction right from the get go. So, Again, it's just ludicrous to, to continue on this path. So, thank you. Okay. Someone else had their hand up back here, I think. No? I would, this would be really quick. Uh, I'm Jeff Nagel. Um, I'm a director on the board at Copley Country Club. Um, Mark, is it? Um, for my, you have to speak to the board, sorry. <laughs> Mark, um, <laughs> for, for, for my context, as well as perhaps others here, is the benefit to the hospital strictly financial? Is that is that the driving force behind all of this? Or is, is there another benefit to the town and, and the population as a whole? That's, I'm curious where it started. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. Mark, you want to speak? To the, yes, I think so. <laughs> so it's, it's purely not financial. <laughs> as you can, Mark Sutton, I'm the director of facilities at Copley. It's just for the for the record. Understood. So it's clearly not just financial because we put, we've shown and demonstrated we put a, a fair amount of money into the road, the sidewalk, the light poles, all that stuff to, to get the town to take it over. So the town would not recover that cost by taking it over. So it should be good for a number of years. I, I have no idea what that is, but um, that road, that roadway, it's a, it's, it's a driveway. It's, I don't even know how you categorize it, right? It's not a private road because the address is down there our Washington Highway, all the way down. It serves Mansfield Orthopedics, the Manor, which is not a hospital entity, in the in the uh, in the terrace as well, right? Which is a, a subsidized building. So it serves more than just Copley Hospital. Copley Hospital has been paying the cost of maintaining that road for since it was built. So for the Manor, for Mansfield Orthopedics, all of that stuff over the years. So I just. That's all I wanted to share. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. So, um, Thanks, Mark. Yep. Jan Paris, I agree with many of the people that have spoke here tonight that we should not take over Dr. <laughs> Tinker Street uh, as a town road. 
because of disrepair that our highway system is already seeing. And I understand that it's good today and maybe last 15 to 20 years, but our road was paved one time and 15 or 20 years later, the fix was to regravel the entire Earl Grey Road. And so if the hospital wants to sign up for some plan like that, that when it needs to be resurfaced, either they put the bill for it or the town could come in and just gravel it and not resurface it, then I'd be willing for them to take have the town take the road over. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Bierke, I'm a member of Healthy Country Club. Um, I'm just curious about that um, conversation. I missed a part of that. Is this a viable option for the town to take over this road, or is it not? It is. It's, it's it didn't being, sound like it was. It sounded like there was a couple of issues that. Well, we could we could vote to a, to we could say yes or no. To take it over. Yes. But it's not. But but it does not agree with our with our policy, our road policy. Okay, so there'd have to be some amendments to the conditions that you already have imposed on you know right. various applicants to accept this. Is that something you're willing to entertain? I'm just asking. And as Mr. Sutton said, we just recently adopted this new road policy, so I'm not okay. sure it's going to change anytime soon. Okay. Okay. So we're not sure about that. So we don't know. We used to, we used to take we used to take over uh, dead end roads. Then we changed the policy not to take. Right. Over right. Roads. And it's my understanding that the hospital wants you to take this over, but I'm not sure why <laughs> they want you to take it over. Is it, there, is it because of a maintenance issue that they can't take care of? I, I, I'm, I'm curious about why they would want you to take it over. I don't know if it's Or a, why, it's as importantly, you'd want to take over the expenditures of maintaining that. Yeah, and I, don't, so, I don't know if it's something that we, can, we can't, we don't have that information to answer that question. Okay, okay. So we're not going to vote on this tonight. Then. Yes, we are. We are. We're oh, you are? Okay, so, okay, okay. So, um, well, I'm vehemently opposed to it, tapping into Copley Country Club property, charging in and taking over and putting in roadways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When I do believe Copley Hospital has the property under its charge that it could satisfy conditions of 2,000 feet, 1,000 feet within its own property to get you to consider taking this over. That's my understanding. <coughs> so, I'm opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else with their hand up? Laura. Laura, I'm calling you next. My name is Bob Henry. I live at Jersey Heights in Morrisville. Um, even if this road was extended, it doesn't go to town property. The golf course is owned by the village. Right. I thought I heard you say it had access town property. It says public property. Okay. So it's perfectly imperfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with it, with what everybody else said. Okay. Laura? Uh, yes, I just want to be clear that the policy has not always been to uh, plow dead end roads because when I moved in, they weren't plowing my road um, because we didn't have enough houses. <clears throat> so my understanding is that, um, and, and Kevin can speak to this, is that it was changed not so many years ago um, with a new development. So, you know, this isn't, a re you know, we're going back to not plowing is my understanding. The, the, you're correct. The roads had to be a certain distance or a certain length, and I think five road, five houses had to be on the road in order for the town to take over uh, plowing that road and maintenance. And Thank you. Yeah. So this is not a, a new uh, law or new, you know, ordinance. Well, the the changing the uh, not taking over a dead end road is new. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? My name is George Cormier, C-O-R-M-I-E-R. And what has not been, I think, identified for the board and maybe is of concern to you and is not, is my belief of the damage this extension will be on to Copley Country Club as I look at the diagrams that have been circled around. Um, as Karen said, I think it increases liability. Uh, if you have been up to the coast before, the road that brings us up there 
basically runs the perimeter of the road for the vast majority of the time to a parking lot. There is a continuation that does a loop around the country club, uh, the clubhouse, uh, that allows people to get to the restaurant, allows a handicap access to the restaurant, um, allows people to drop their golf bags off and then take the car back to the parking lot. To extend as the, as the hospital has uh, requested, there's not open land for this to come through. It's going to come through and affect uh, at least one green drastically, one T drastically, transfer the majority of the traffic that now, I mean, you can, we can guess at the number. My guess is about 80% of the traffic that comes up our current roadway, our current driveway, stops at the parking lot. Another 20% of that may come and do a drop off and then go back to the parking lot. A few cars park up there and the handicapped parking is there as well. So this will aesthetically change the course drastically. Anybody that's played there knows that course is using every inch of land that they've got. We're either bounded by the Copley or we're bounded by gullies. There's no place for us to go. I think over the years, uh, the golf course has been redesigned. Initially, Mr. Copley gave it to us as an airport in a golf course. That's been changed. <laughs> Poles have been realigned, but we stayed within that footprint. And I believe over the years, improvements have made to that course. We are as good as we can be right now as a course. It is very well maintained. It is profitable. It is functioning just where it should be as one of the prime assets we have in this community. Bringing that road in from uh, the terrace will drastically change how that course will, has to be played because tees and greens will have to be moved to accept this road in, in a reasonable way. 80% of the traffic that was coming up the hill is now going to pass right in front of the clubhouse porch. The clubhouse is one of the components that makes that course special. It's lovely to play it. It's nicer to sit on the porch and enjoy a refreshment or a meal and look at Mount Elmo. This road comes through, 80% of the traffic will drive right by the porch to get to the main parking lot. We certainly don't have a place to put another parking lot. The aesthetics of that are horrible. The effect on this course, aesthetically, as a golfer and as uh, for its viability economically, I'm going to be negatively, severely impacted by this idea. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say, I want to thank, uh, I believe it was Karen who originally came up and as chair of the country club and gave her remarks and everyone else who's given their remarks as well. I came in, I got a whole bunch of questions at the bottom of this page It's describing a reason for this road. And I had a lot of questions about why in the world we were going to put this road in. And uh, I think we've heard of an awful lot of uh, discussion on one side of this issue. And I, for one, am ready to vote. I have one more person to speak in the okay. Brian Eaton, Y-E-A-T-O-N. I'm not for or against it, but I think I misunderstood. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Is the hospital asking to continue the road through the country club or to continue their road and then have a right of way so if in the future the country club wanted to do something, they could? Because that was my understanding of it. And the, a lot of the discussion sounds like the hospital wants to now build a road through the country club. I, I think your, your last assumption is correct, that it is to... Uh, for the town to take over the road, it'll dead end at uh, it's up the terrace at the, at the back, and but the possibility of the road can be extended then through the golf course. That's my understanding. Is that correct, Tyler? Yeah, that's. I wanted to say that the, the proposal is not has not been to extend this road physically tomorrow onto the golf course property and make any changes to the golf course property. It has been to simply provide a right of way extension along Dr. Tinker Street and across the Copley Terrace property to provide potential future access to the to the Copley golf course. So, you know, there's there's no ill intent there as far as 
trying to to ruin the, the golf course is simply to provide access to allow the street to fall under the standards as a access to public lands. Right. Can, I, can I call the question? Yes. There we go. Um, I want to just remind the, um, the public that when a motion is presented, it has to be presented uh, in a positive way. So, and that has been done already. So, um, all those in favor of, can you repeat the uh, motion again? My motion was to <clears throat> approve the taking over by the town of Morristown of Dr. Tinker Street as a town road. All those in favor? Me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All those opposed? Me. Nay. Nay. Laura? Did you hear that nay? No. Okay, now we did. Yes, thank you. So the motion has not passed. So we're still having a meeting here. If you could file and leave, I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Should they take your seat? So while we're waiting for it, we're going to start up our meeting again, but I'd like to introduce that we have some scouts here who um, are here to work on a merit badge. Is that correct? Uh, would, you, would you like to want to introduce yourself? Of course you would. Yes, you uh, my name is Ellen McAllister. I'm the senior patrol leader of Troop 876. And I'm Jacob Atwood. Jacob Allen. Atwood. Atwood. I'm Patrick Knapp. So, Patrick, say your last name again. Knapp. Knapp. And ATP. Uh, Cohen Cookson. So, and, and your goal here was that you had to be observing some conflict, which we provided it for you. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. So, you're welcome to come back anytime. I know you probably don't want to stay for a whole week. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck this year, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda approved buyout of. Uh, um, 2284 Vermont Route East, Route 15 East due to flooding. So Todd Thomas is going to talk about this. You're up, Todd. 2284 Route 15. I'm, I'm not the applicant, so I'm not sure. I'm happy to give technical advice, but... Well, do you want to just explain to the select board what it is? Sure. So uh, we had four homes damaged in the July floods. This is the only one I deemed as the flood zone administrator be a substantial loss. They are applying for the state program to receive a state buyout for their property. Uh, there's a couple things that need to happen in order for us to do that. One of them is the select board needs to agree to maintain the property once it's public property. The maintenance includes uh, brush hogging, mowing, making sure there's no new tree growth and drainage areas, those kind of things. So we'll have to maintain the property going forward. And there should be a discussion about who removes the structures if you agree to go forward with the grant application. Do we have to brush hog it? Yes. Why? Uh, because you don't want um, any flood debris. You don't want, for example, you don't want brush or trees growing in the drainage, in any drainage areas because that can impact floodwaters and, and uh, compound the flood. I mean, is this, this is FEMA making us do this? Correct, yes. You have to agree to do this in order for them to get the bio grants. Oh, okay. You just have to brush hog it or mow it a couple times a year. Uh, the big thing is the structures. Right. So the structures have to be gone within 90 days. The town, from my understanding, can, if they want to take this on, can do the work and get reimbursed by the modern emergency management. Or the select board could say, we don't have the manpower wherewithal to remove the structures. Uh, and we could, you could ask the applicant to do that yourselves. You can say, oh, we'll sign this on the provision that we're not in charge of removing the structures. So, um, to, to be clear, though, I mean, these aren't public structures. These are private buildings. So to put that bill on the public is a hard pill to swallow. But 
I've been told by uh, the, uh, the emergency management people there are grant funds that cover the town's costs. I don't know if that covers in kind or not. So Todd, a couple questions. Yes, if I may. That was, that was the one thing was the, removing the existing structure within 90 days of settlement. Um, FEMA typically has paid 75% reimbursement to towns. Is this typical? I mean, if we took this on and applied for FEMA, A, is it guaranteed, and B, is it full value? The grant work is always done by administration, these kind of things. I'm not the best person to answer this. Right. This is town administration. Okay, uh, second, second question then is, um, are there any hazardous materials? Is there anybody that's gone in and looked? Is there an oil tank? Is there a, a, a below grade? Property owners are here. They're okay. the best right. Okay, I'll save that question. Anything else I can do on this? Todd, before you sit down, is there a, do we have any kind of an estimate of what it would cost to remove all these structures? I do not know. There is a uh, a mobile home that's got a trailer underneath it. It's got some additions to it. There's a stick built garage and there's a Quonset hut. So there are three structures on the property. Let's say we ask the uh, <clears throat> the owner to remove the the the, the, prop, the structures and they're not removed. Can the town then remove it and then get money to reimburse ourselves? I didn't know that it would be on the town's back to remove the structures until later last week. Um, and I asked about the 90 days. 90 days to remove structures in Vermont in mid-November is a tough pill to swallow. So I asked about if there's leniency on that. And they basically said, well, as long as you're working on it and agree to do it, and let's say you get some stuff done and we get snowed in, you can say, we'll pick it up in April or May. That's going to be okay. They'll, they'll work with you on that. But, but, but if, it, if the structure is structures aren't removed, can we then remove them and then get reimbursed? I don't know the answer to that. I think you need to talk to uh, the state officials on that one who run the program. So that would that would make a decision about it. That would determine, I think, my decision. Okay. Yeah. At the very least, I would love to see the select board help the property owners. Right. They don't have to leave. They're, they are agreeing to the buyout. They don't want to be in harm's way again. That property will flood again. They will be, their lives will be at risk again. The water comes up very quickly there. So I'd love to see the select board at least agree to sign the provision, sign, to agree to this with provision that we're going to investigate who does the structures and we haven't made that determination, we'll be responsible for that removal yet. But I'd like to keep their grants going. The money isn't indefinitely out there for them. Okay. Todd, I for one would, would, would agree with you. I'd, I'd love to see the select board agree to this. We had a lengthy conversation at the Board of Debatement meeting the other night and agreed to abate all taxes on this property. Yep. And this seemed to be one of the uh, outstanding issues to just kind of clear this for the for the property owners but there is we just you know I guess I'm a little bit concerned about what the burden would be for the town of Morristown to do this I mean I'm, I'm ready to do it might be somebody in the back that can help us out with this but just to get an estimate on on what what it would take to you know rectify this problem Sure. And I'm I'm comfortable if we, if we were table this till the next meeting, we could have Carrie look into it a little bit and try to get some of these answers so we can completely understand what out of pocket expense it will cost for the town. Okay. So it'd be good. I don't know, might be good to hear from the property owner tonight what it would mean if we waited. And I do it, think it, it would be a month just so everybody knows we first. don't have a regular select board meeting until the first week of December. We do take that leap of faith. Um, I, the person I talked to the state, it's easy to say that until the check's written, but they're saying they you fully refund it. I just don't know if it's in kind or not. In kind of maybe out of pocket, but not for the hours the highway crews out there lugging stuff out of there, but at least they're refunded for actual cost. Dennis, Marshall, Fire Chief. If you guys can get the building signed over to you, and if we can work with the state on Todd's, I'd like to use the property for training. And then in the springtime, I'd train with burning both the structures. The only one I couldn't do is a quantity. Just throwing that out there. I know the place. I was there that night. I know how much water got there. But I just found out about it at 4.30 this afternoon <laughs> that it was on the agenda. Like so thing. it's just the only thing uh, we got to get a hold of the EPA. They come out. It's no different than any other burning of a structure. We got to make sure we can, we're going to use it for training. 
the one cost that falls on the homeowners is asbestos testing and removal. So that's done by a third party. Does the EPA Dennis uh, take a look at any other hazardous materials on the property? So yep, yeah. I got to fill out an application to the state and give them dates, and then they'll come out and look at it, and they let me know yes or no, or yes, you got to do this. But the one thing I do know is, as far as any asbestos, the homeowner pays to have that removed and tested. Right. That's a must. I got to have that certification from a credible business. What happens to the, the burning, the burn the roof debris? Do you remove that then? No, you do. The town does? Yeah. Oh, because you're using it as a training site. You're going you're gonna to remove the tin, anything that doesn't burn, you know, I mean, you bring in the excavator, the dump truck, may have one dump truck load. And we've done this. This is what the town has done before. And you've done it. Well, I've done buildings before in the town. My last one was a barn across from the airport. Right. And then the town did the, did they remove the debris? No, MSI did. Oh, okay. Because it was their building. Okay. So whoever owns the property is the one that does the cleanup. All right. So I, I, like so I don't get the feeling the board's opposed to this. Laura wants um, to speak. But okay. yeah, I don't get the feeling the board's opposed to this. One sec, Laura. I just feel like there's some unanswered questions. And if we could table this for a month till our next meeting, get some of these questions answered, it might be a good way to move forward. I just wanted to throw that out there because I didn't really want to sit here for 30 minutes about a building. <laughs> so <laughs> that was all. Thanks, Teddy. I am not replaying nothing. <laughs> Laura? Um, thank you, Ke uh, thank you, Dennis, for that. Uh, I do have concerns about um, adding more tasks to our administrative staff, given that we're um, really short right now and what we're heading into. Um, you know, that's a concern because if we run into a bunch of overtime to try to get this paperwork, I certainly want to help this homeowner. Um, but I do think we have to be very careful about committing to a lot of cost. I know that the um, carry um, is only um, contracted for X number of hours. So it's mm -hmm. not, there's no overtime there. And Todd, this has to happen. This, we're on a timeline for this, correct? Yes, you need to act soon because the buyout process is right. going to be ending or the pot of money is not there forever. Right. Yes. Okay. I'd be concerned about tabling the money. On their behalf, on the property owner's behalf. Let the property owner speak. Would you like to speak? Yeah. 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 I'm Cindy Hood. Um, my husband, Donald Campania. Um, we're the property owners for 2284 Vermont Route 15 East. Um, and we've been working with Vermont Emergency Management and FEMA and Todd has been our saving grace because there's a lot of papers. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, and I look at it as a positive thing because we've learned a lot and we've gained a lot of very valuable friends and a lot of insights to the good that's left in this world. So, but I don't want to cry again. <laughs> um, so, um, basically the ways that the laws are written with fema and stuff because our property sustained over 50 percent damage it was almost like 90 percent damage if not more um in order for us to rebuild there we would need to bring the land up above the flood flood zone which would be level with vermont Road 15. um Obviously, that can't happen. Our water supply was severely contaminated and broken down. Our septic system, um, the lines were all broken. All of that would have to be fixed. Um, the entire house, um, the entire basement, everything was totally flooded. So the heating system and everything is gone. It went up into our living area, and that is now overgrown with mold um and all the floors would have had to have been replaced anyways there was 
that's just for the house. The, the house, the garage is totally destroyed. It's knocked on the the cement pad, knocked over the walls, caving in. Everything in there was destroyed. The the entire garage was underwater. Um, the shop, the Quanta Hut, um, and I'm kind of sorry for the end that came up. Thank you. Is <laughs> your offer is absolutely amazing. Um, we've had a couple of people tell us that they um, are interested. They would come and dismantle the Quanta Hut and take it. Um, so that would be like phenomenal. The only two things left to disappear. Um, I know it's asking a lot of the town to take on that fate. Um, speaking with Todd earlier today, because like I said, we've been filling out all of the paperwork because we know that we're under the, the gun and the deadlines with, there's, there's multiple different buyout programs. Some of them are supported through FEMA and some of them are supported through the state. Um, and they're working at both of them to find out what is the best for everyone involved. Um, just so that it prevents flooding of the other properties around us and stuff because it's not going to get any better. Um, we had thought about at one time, even if we could put like a trailer up close to Route 15 <clears throat> and Todd and the people from the state came and we would like literally have to put it on Route 15. There's not enough room that's out of the flood zone and area for us to be able to live safely. Um, and what we have, we can't work with. So um, I know Don and I were out there all weekend this weekend. Um, we have tried to get everything out of the yard and stuff. Um, we did um, some control burns and got a lot, most everything taken care of there this weekend. As far as that goes, we've gotten 98% of everything out of the house. Um, and we're just hoping um we we honestly don't know until i talked with todd this evening we're still kind of a little in the gray area of where the money needs to come from to get rid of the houses off of the buildings off of the property not the houses the buildings um i know that fema the not fema the lady that Senator Sanders had called me from Vermont Emergency Management when they were originally getting all of the information across the state. She had told me when they put in the numbers for the grants that they try to pad that a little bit. I don't know if that padding is to help to incur on some of these expenses. Mm -hmm. I need to, to work more with, find out some more information from them. Um, but I'm just, I am, um, begging at your mercy that we don't lose the window for the application process. So I think what we have to do is figure out how do we word our, our motion so that we cover all the bases we need to cover. Do you agree? So I guess my question is, um, there's a lot of unknowns in all of this conversation. Mm -hmm. We don't know what your filing deadline is. I think it would be really helpful for with whomever you're working with to find out what your filing deadline is. I the think, way, go ahead. No, go the ahead. way that it was explained to me was that there, it's more of a first come first serve basis. They obviously, the original thing was to gather all of the information from the entire state to see what how much funds they needed to try to help everyone that was in our particular situation. Right. Um, and then as, as each town because technically they can't do anything until they get the approval from the town to go forward because even though it's te technically at this moment it's don's property it's in his name it's the town that is actually the person that's applying for the grant because they're supporting it and they're willing to take on the responsibility of the property after we walk away because the town, the state's not going to come in and FEMA's not going to come in and mow the lawn and keep the trees cut down. And so basically it's, 
the sooner you get the information to them and the sooner that the process is done, the better your chances are because when the funds are gone, you're out of luck. So it's, if, yeah, if, if I can ask Todd, um, so it sounds as if if we just, we approve, do the approval of this form, we can then, um, and, and Carrie does some research for us, we can, we can set the process in motion now and then some of these other things that we can figure out as we go along. I'm, I'm just thinking I, I think that's answer. probably what I'd try to do. If you make them wait a month, they're probably, you're talking about a quarter million dollars for their people, for these fam this family to, sorry, I mean, they're still there, <laughs> sorry, yeah. to, find, to find a new home. It's, it's just very serious. This yeah. is like stay in this community money or, or can you rent an apartment forever? And I mean, until two nights ago, they were still paying taxes on this property even though they've abandoned it. So the town has to help them here. And whether we want to craft the language to work out who will be responsible for the structures, that may be something you may want to do. Because I'm just not sure. I'm trying to pitch in and help. This is more generally grants and more of an administration type thing. I'm trying to pitch in and do my best I can here. It's kind of all hands on deck around here. Yeah. So I'm a little outside my wheelhouse in terms of how you might, if the highway crew can do it, if you have the manpower, if you don't have the manpower, if the chief is willing to burn it, uh, I suggested they talked to him a bit ago. That was a, that's a very helpful. But I, I would, I feel better knowing that she was probably going to be able to burn them. I'd feel better as a type with my taxpayer hat on knowing that I don't think we're on the hook for a big expenditure here from the town. But if you want to word your motion somehow to say that if we cannot burn it, the town will not be responsible, only be responsible for removing the structures up to a certain amount. I mean, that's up to the board. I can't craft that motion for you. I uh, know. I don't, my thought is I don't have any idea what the cost is for, for doing something like this. For, is it $5,000? Is it $25,000? That's the, that's my, my question, not having any. So we have a resource available to us and that's Carrie Johnson. Yeah. And I think that um, if we were going to do a provisional motion, uh, talking about the fact that we would be willing to enter into an agreement uh, pending um, research from Gary in terms of uh, property, research from Dennis about uh, hazardous, potential hazardous uh, waste that may or may not be on the property. Um, that may get them still in the pipeline because the town is making some sort of a uh, good faith effort to help them and be uh, a party to this, but we we need to have some facts on the ground before we commit tax dollars to it. And I will add, I think that's a good suggestion. I will add that the Quonset Hut's the one building that the fire department won't be able to burn. That's the one building that has value and someone's going to come and take disassemble that and take that away. I'm, pr I'm pretty confident. I mean, I'll bet people are looking at Yeah, I bet people approach me about that. So I, th I think the town, I just don't know if we, 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 according to emergency management, we should get full reimbursement. I just don't know if we're getting reimbursed in kind for if you're sending the highway crew up there or the fire department. I don't know the answer to that, but supposedly anything out of pocket, we should be reimbursed here. So I'm reasonably comfortable with that. I'm especially more comfortable knowing that Denny, in theory, can burn the other two buildings and that someone else will take the Quonset off their hands. There's still an issue of getting rid of the tin and making sure that there's no hazardous material there. And um, so I think um, I would be open to um, provisional motion with those, with those two uh, being investigated, that the town would be willing to enter into an agreement with that, with that information, pending that information, I should say. Can I ask, um, Carrie, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I know you've been jotting down a lot of information as we've been going through this discussion. How likely, <laughs> and I know I know it's not a 100% uh, answer, but how likely do you think you might be able to get most of these answers in a week? And I'm saying a week because in a week, and I know we have, I know we have a meeting that, uh, thank you, that's, that is designated for budget to begin the budget discussion. But I got to tell you, if I was in Don and Cindy's shoes, and I really feel for the situation you guys are in, I would hope the town would step up for me. And, uh, you know, so that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, we've got a responsibility to the taxpayers, but 
we also have responsibility to our residents here who have been through tremendous hardship. And uh, so I guess my question is, what do you think? In a week, do you think we may be able to get a lot of answers? I think you can, yes. Um, and I, yes, I'm Carrie Johnson. I will work I'm just sorry. a brief, um, I'll back up a little. I did work in municipal administration for about 19 years, um, working with FEMA twice. Um, and almost every single time we worked with FEMA, the town did just fine. You know, their FEMA rates more than cover um, a lot of debris removal. I just don't know, and I'm gonna have to research what they are now. I did like the floods in 2011 and other things, so I'm not sure. I just wanna make sure they haven't changed their rules. Um, but if the fire department can train in it and get the proper permits and burn it, then it's a lot, a lot less debris removal. Right. Uh, so, Todd, what do you think of one week? Uh, delaying a decision for one week. Any delay scares me when there are livelihoods on the line, but um, one week's a lot better than one month. But... If, and I haven't, I read through this today, the FEMA model statement of insurances for property acquisition projects. I didn't commit it to memory, so I don't know all the details, but the one maintenance agreement, that's a, that's a kind of a no brainer. Correct. There's no, there's no real money right now. Uh, transferring hands here, but I don't know. In this one, I don't think there is either. I think, as she said, we, we're going to be okay, especially with the fire crew burning the properties and getting reimbursed. I'm not too worried about the financial expenditure. I just don't know about the in kind. That's just manpower hours. Hopefully, you can afford them. The real thing here is you're agreeing to maintain this property forever yeah. in perpetuity. Yeah. Mow it, keep the trees out of the drainage areas, all that <clears> fun <throat> stuff. So that's the thing: is twice a year, your road crew is going to be not just mowing the war memorial, they're going to be mowing a property up in Route 15 East. That's the really, that's the thing you're really agreeing to tonight. How big is it? How big is property? Four acres. All four acres has to be mowed? No, no. Most of it's Yeah. Okay. And then what's the woods now you can leave? Yeah. Okay. So. I guess it's maybe an acre and a half clear. Yeah. It's maybe an acre and a half to be mowed. And I'll just follow up with long term maintenance isn't that onerous and we had a property in St. Albans town that we um, the town had taken over. Um, and there's very little ongoing paperwork for the, for admin like I think once since I've been there they they asked me to drive by the property and confirm that it was still open into perpetuity so every few years they will ask someone on the town to confirm that and that was it, it was a very simple procedure. The longer I'm listening to this discussion, I, I would like to make a motion. Okay. I would like to make the motion that we approve the buyout of 2284 Vermont Route 15 East due to the flood. I have a motion and a second. I'll second. Any discussion? We've had a lot. We've had a lot of discussion. It sounds like as we discuss this more and more, the uh, there could be a burden on the town. It's going to be a burden on our highway department, but it may be minimal. So, uh, we right have on. reason to think Vermont Emergency Management or FEMA is going to step up and give us money. Maybe not in kind money, as Todd said, but I'm going to say it again. You know, I, I think if any of us were in this situation, we're, we're not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. So um, that we would ask our fellow residents to help out. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, do you have an underground propane tank or oil tank on site or anything yeah, like that? 275 is the oil tank in the basement. Okay. And do you know if it's just about season. Okay. And did did you have a spill when you got flooded? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. I think we're all set to vote. Laura. Could you repeat the motion, please? Uh, my motion was to <laughs> approve the buyout of 2284 Vermont Route 15 East due to the flood. Could I amend that motion? What would your amendment be? Well, I'm just, again, I'm, I'm concerned about any contamination on the site that the municipality may be on the hook for. Um, but if we made the amendment that the homeowner would, would be responsible for any mitigation uh, due to, um, 
hazardous, whether it's asbestos or oil or whatever, um, then I'd be comfortable with it. Uh, just to follow up on that, I, I don't know what, we have brown fields with LCPC, and I don't know if that just applies to businesses or if it applies to residential settings, but that might be an option that would be able to access that process. Right. <clears throat> Again, it's a I, I would be happy with that amendment, and that's, uh, you know, it goes along with what Dennis said earlier that he would need such a piece of paperwork to help him through the burn process anyway. Right. But would, would what we're voting on give the go ahead for the whole process? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. Just want to make sure the motion is saying what needs to be said. Does it sound good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So can we what? can you we reread the amended motion, the whole thing, everything? <laughs> so we you say you said uh, <clears throat> that any hazardous material on site um, would be um, the homeowner's responsibility, I guess in simple language. Asbestos slash hazardous material. So the Motion would be to approve the buyout of 2284 Vermont Route 15 East due to the flood with the removal, uh, the cost of the removal of any asbestos or hazardous materials would be the responsibility of the homeowners. I have uh, someone. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Brian again. Uh, I worked with FEMA once in the past and I don't, I don't know these folks, but I agree with Don, we should try to help them. I, there is a concern in my head that if you guys put a restriction on it, that FEMA or Vermont could look at that as the town may or may not buy it out and therefore not allow them to make the application. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just so you, everybody's kind of aware of that, because if that's the case, then it will be worse than waiting a week for you guys. Right? Mm -hmm. Bunch of well, I mean, the way the motion is structured, I guess, my thought is is that if there is any um, material there that needs to be needs to be removed out of the proceeds of their of their grant or money, they would they would take care of it. What do you think, Carrie? <coughs> um, yeah. There's, there are still some unknowns. I don't think you're ever going to get to 100% comfort level here, but there are, there's money for municipalities for brownfields too. You know, we just had to do our old town garage because we thought mobile oil had contaminated for all time, but the testing didn't come back um, that bad. So we, we did spend $10,000, but after that we spent nothing because the brownfields took care of the next 10. $10,000. So is brownfield that it covers um, residential as well as commercial? I don't know that. That's part of what I, I believe it does, but I don't think it's the same program. Obviously, there's different. So what I'm saying is if the town accepted that risk, there's it's minimized by a limit, a cap on how much you'd have to pay out. Okay. I know <clears throat> the and, sorry, city coming in. I'm talking to the microphone. The, sorry, sorry. the gentleman from the fire department, I'm sure Don will sign whatever you need to get that test for the asbestos thing. And I hear on the radio every morning when I drive to Burlington to work, call at $250 and they'll come get the oil tank out of your house before it starts leaking. Yeah. We'll call to get <laughs> the oil tank out for $250. I don't want that to be a burden to the select board. I'll make that happen. Thank you. I, I, I kind of think I'm concerned about putting um, uh, conditions conditions on this. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's a democratic process. <laughs> so um, we didn't vote on the amendment. No. OK, so we're going to Go forward right now. We have a second on your motion. Do we not or not? We have a second on the motion. I did agree to the amendment. So how does this work? All right, I'll, I'll retract my amendment. Okay. And then you can vote on the motion. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree to the retraction. Okay. 
So could you state the motion again? So Bonnie, the motion is, <laughs> are you ready? Do you need another pen? <laughs> I make the motion to approve the buyout of 2284 Vermont Route 15 East due to the flood. Period. Motion by Don to have a second. Second it again. Second by Richard. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's going to pass. <laughs> Decision on zoning bylaws 2023. Todd, you want to speak to that? Does zoning bylaws? I was talking to. That's okay. I'm sorry, what's your question? Zoning bylaws. Oh, I'm ready for that. Yes. Uh, I'm happy to report that the trustees last Wednesday night approved the zoning bylaws as warned. So, I'm looking for the select board to make a matching motion tonight, and I'm happy to answer any questions on the pending zoning after hearing. If any, any more questions you have, I would make the motion to accept the um, the uh, zoning bylaw changes uh, as warned. I'll second that. A motion by Chris and a second by Don. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Thank you all. I think that's the first we've never had any changes in the last 15 years we've been here, so that's a big deal. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> all right, number five, discuss town charter with Carrie Johnson. All right, awesome. I'm gonna ask the people, uh, you might wanna come up here so they have the notes. Yep. <coughs> I had notes there. I wanna make sure I partially follow. And again, we'll um, state that Carrie is working for the town because we're uh, we don't have a town administrator. We're an interim who's doing a fantastic job, but he also is wearing another hat. So Carrie is uh, been employed for I think twenty four hours a week. Right. Is that correct? Yep. Up and, to. And, um, and so and, and she's <clears throat> been taking over a lot of projects that were helping um, Jason on the deal. Yep, and one of the projects is uh, looking into our town charter. Thank you. All right, Take it thank away. you for setting that up. So, um, yeah, so I did work in a municipality that did the same thing a number of years ago. So for people that weren't, um, I mean, I talked to Jason and Chris, but um, that weren't in on that initial conversation. Um, when I got first got to St. Albans Town, I had a, a very, um, active select board member who was interested in that so we for, we started this process um, i will tell you it took us a few fits and starts we had um, assumed that people would understand things so i guess you, i'm saying that because i think you guys will benefit from what we learned what not to do um, and the pace is one of the things i think that we need to revise when i first met with chris and um and tina and jason and judy um there was consensus, I think, informal consensus from the select board that you'd like to move forward with a charter. I think the most important thing that we can do to begin the process is this, is to say it out loud, put it on the agenda, and then begin the process of um, educating people. Um, so one of the first things that we need to do today to make a decision is to Decide on the time when you want to ask people to vote on this very important thing. Um, I worked with Jim Barlow when I did this process way back. I believe it was started in 2012 for us. Um, and one of his biggest piece of advice was to make it very, very small. You can build on this later. So for anyone to understand, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to advise you to change anything wholly in your town. Um, just start small. So if the wish is let's have a charter and the charter has one section in it, it will literally probably have three. There's some legal stuff, as you saw um, in your packet, should have been the St. Albans Town Charter. The St. Albans Town Charter for reference has three whole sections. The first one is the local option tax. The second one was to change our planning commission from elected to appointed. And the third was removal of um, elected officials. And that really was that chart, that piece 
um, if you had someone who had maybe embezzled money or you went on a killing spree and for some reason you're like, I can still lead the town, you know, the townspeople might have an issue with that. Um, I don't know you, Don, so I'm not I'm trying to start rumors. Um, so, to find out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to find out. It's a long trip back. Um, so the first thing we need to do is decide when to have the vote. And in order to have time to let people ask questions, to meet with, have some small meetings, um, I would recommend that you hold this vote um, in November of next year. So that will give people time to ask those questions, um, people to come out and object if they choose to do that. We had a little, a, not a lot of objections, but there is still some concern when you talk about local, local option taxes because it has that three letter word. So um, one of the things that I would like to do leave tonight is with some consensus on, are you okay with waiting till November? Um, it's a presidential election. You'll probably get a lot of people that come to vote um, and some good fair participation at that time. So I, do you have questions? And I think to, um, you know, to your point, um, gathering data to support the local option tax is going to be a key component along with the discussion points with the public. Um, and uh, as much as I like to move at the speed of light, I don't think this is one of those things that's going to be able to move that way. We want to make sure that we get it right the first time and, uh, and do it thoughtfully. Um, so I, I'm in concurrence with a next November as much as it pains me to say that. Yeah. I feel the same way. It's something we need to think about before we just jump into it. Yeah. Laura? Uh, yes, I agree. Wait till November, um, just because we've got a lot going on with budget and manager, uh, and it would actually would be nice to have a manager's input um, on this if they're coming in. Uh, so I agree with November, and thank you for that, Carrie. No problem. Perfect. I don't need a motion on that necessarily. Um, so the second point, I think um, I have two through eight here in your notes, um, is that I believe we're, you're going to need to appoint, and this does not have to be done this evening, um, but appoint a charter committee. Um, each town is different. Um, in our town, uh, we had two, or two select board members and we had a couple other business people. Uh, myself as the manager was participated. The town clerk participated, our town clerk treasurer. Um, so just kind of have to think about it. And at this point, if you want to ask people if they're interested, if you're going to appoint one or two, I would say that the committee should be fairly small. Um, at this point, you know, Jim Barlow is your town attorney. At that point, when I worked with him, he worked for Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns. Um, and his advice was derived from working with a lot of municipalities through the charter process. So he advised the shortness um, a lot. Um, I would say we did we did it backwards. We had a year's worth of meetings and had a 30 page charter in which he red penned 80, maybe 90% of it because we were in essence without knowing it setting case, setting law, new law that hadn't been tried before. So that's why he advised us against it. So you might have people interested, just I think clarifying that the the scope of work is going to be fairly narrow. If someone has always wanted a X, Y, or Z, this isn't the time to do that. I think the time mm -hmm. is to focus on one, one, one topic. Is it too late if we waited until March to get a charter committee together? Because hopefully by that time we'll have a new town manager. Mm -hmm. If we started a charter committee now, we also have we also have people, uh, like our town clerk is also on the committee to, uh, on the search committee for the town manager. So um, I'm just wondering about mm -hmm. leading the whole process. Correct. Um, I mean, that's really a decision for your board. I, I was thinking you probably could meet once a month, so I don't think the lift would be huge. Um, the bigger lift is trying to coordinate and I will help you do that with the public meetings, with answering people's questions, with meeting meeting with businesses, your politicians to make sure they understand what you're trying to do. Um, 
so that when hopefully the taxpayers uh, approve the charter, you can you then have to go to the legislature and get it approved through that through that um, for, through them as well. So you could wait, but I think it would be you could at least right now it's November appoint the committee in December, <clears throat> maybe start in January. Um, and you would be willing to help guide that process? Oh, absolutely. I love right. it's kind of I do love municipal government. I just retired from doing it 60 hours a week. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I'm here on a Monday night. It's fun. I know. But um, so, yeah, so all the other things on here we can um, we can discuss at those meetings. I will say one of the other questions as you're thinking about this, either driving maybe when you're at home, um, local option tax means you can you have three options. You can tax the rooms and meals, which is hotel rooms, those kind of things, restaurants, not your grocery store. Um, sales, it piggybacks on a lot of the sales programs that the state um, taxes, not everything, not cars. You know, there's things that are excluded from sales tax. And then, what am I missing? Rooms, is use, meals, is alcohol. use tax? Is alcohol. Use alcohol. <laughs> alcohol. I don't know if I can forget that. Um, that's alcohol that's served with some additional benefit like it's not a six pack at the grocery store or the liquor store it's at a bar those kind of things catering maybe but um those those are the things that are just so there's three different phases um and we chose to do all of them um the other decision point will be um where you put those funds to use mm -hmm. and it's critical when you pose that question on your ballot to be really clear, um, because you can't change that without another vote. So the public votes on where the money goes? Yes, the public approves. It's a, two separate questions. It can be on the same ballot, but to approve a charter and the language will be obviously presented. And then also um, the, the specific, do you authorize a municipality to um, charge local option taxes? And in our motion, it was, drafted by our town attorney, but um, they chose, the select board at that time chose to put our funds to infrastructure. And infrastructure was not further defined, so it's generally existing or future infrastructure. So, now, um, where, where the funds go is not part of the charter, but rather part of the correct by the town's Correct, people. yes. Okay. Yep. So the ch charter is just allowing for such a thing. to Right. Occur. And the charter for us, I mean, the reason Jim shredded our, our charter and that was fine. It was good advice, but the legislature, and I think we're in appropriations, um, also further um, shortened it because they wanted it to mirror the state law so that if they changed um, the processing percentage, then it would automatically be updated. Laura, do you have a question? <clears throat> Um, I well, I do. I have a question, but I also want to say that I think we need to start this sooner than later, because as we know, summer everybody disappears, uh, and if in a perfect world, all the businesses are going to be really busy. Um, so I think we do need to get it started uh, sooner than later. And Carrie, I have a question on. Um, I have heard that there are towns that tax only. Uh, hotels and Airbnb, and they do not tax the restaurants. Can that be uh, separated out? Mm, I'm not sure about that. I so rooms and meals, I thought was one leg, but um, so you're talking about only charging for rooms, the rooms, not the meals. We I could look heard, yeah, I, I and I don't remember which town, but um, that they were only doing rooms to not penalize the restaurants. Right. Um, a question we can um, find out later if we don't, you know, just something I think we should look at. You certainly can. I mean, we had one restaurant owner um, object. It's, they're not being severely penalized. I would say, you know, one of the public meetings we had, we showed up a, a pizza restaurant, for instance, and a $30 bill, you'd be paying 30 cents to the local option tax fund. So I don't, and, and he, I talked to him recently, he's doing fine. It didn't ruin his business. It didn't um, cause any significant declines in his business because of this. Yeah, so I, penalize is not the great word. We're just coming out of a bad time. So I, I would actually like, I'm just considering 
having it delayed a little bit. But, um, you know, if, it, if we're looking at not going until November, it might be a, a, a moot point. So. Well, even if the so there, this is a long game. If yeah. the town approved that those both of those motions in November, you have to go in the spring into the legislature and get to okay. the the two different committees to approve it. Um, you know, the money committee and the government ops committee. Mm -hmm. They have they they don't really change it very little, but it's it's a okay just something you have to go through, and then they. Once that gets approved through the legislature, then it, you have 90 days, the Department of Taxes, it's either 90 or more, um, they take time to start communicating to all the businesses. So, yeah, so we're looking at potentially a year before this would be enacted. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Tricia? No, just nope. okay. Yeah, yeah, I could say a little bit on this one too. And I, I mean, I hear Laura and I hear where she's speaking about um businesses, but I I feel very strongly that this needs to include all of our restaurants. I mean, our restaurants are a thriving business in our community. If you look at how many restaurants we have in our community, it's a lot. And to take out that sector. I don't believe would benefit the town of Morristown. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. So, what do you need from us tonight? Um, well, I'd like to know if there is consensus um, to appoint a charter committee, maybe as early as your next meeting in December. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yes. So that's what I'll work towards. I'm going to be in the office a little bit here for the next week or two while Judy's gone. Um, and that will be the goal then to, um, to make sure we're all set for your first meeting in December. Perfect. Great. So what would you be, so if we, we have a consensus, mm -hmm. what would you be bringing to us in December? Um, additional information. I guess I would like to get a proposal from Jeff Carr. I think it was very helpful when we worked with him in, in St. Albans to analyze the data independently. Um, he also mm -hmm. was really great about being able to identify where those funds were coming from. In our case, and in many cases, he said that a majority of the funds are not from people who live here. They're from people mm -hmm. visiting your, your municipality. So um, that made a big difference for an awful lot of taxpayers, right? Mm -hmm. You're, like, I know I'm paying $20 more in this, but maybe the money is a lot better for the municipality, so. You did mention something about, don't remember where I could underline it, but, um, Jeff Carr? No, you talked about money. Talk about uh, where it would be allocated. Where no, where would how would we be paying for this? Oh. Oh, having some having some small um, a small amount of funds to pay for the senior economist to um, and possibly an education campaign. We found it really useful to have a few public meetings. Um, even to send out a postcard to taxpayers to say when those meetings were going to be. Mm -hmm. um, because it's kind of hard right now. I don't know about Morrisville and Morristown. I'm not an expert, of course, but people get their information from so many different sources now. And somehow mm -hmm. direct mail still seems to catch some of those people that aren't watching on social media or aren't watching the fascinating Zoom meetings. Um, you know, some people are like, what's going on? It's, this all came on so soon. So the postcard was really effective, and but that costs a little bit of money. Right. Um, Tina, could you help us out here about, is there some way that, and do you have any idea about cost? Or is this something we should talk about next month? I think it's next month. I'm going to build a budget. I don't want to, I don't okay. want to wing I'll that. into it too, y'all. Get my magic wand out. <laughs> yeah, so Carrie and I yeah. talked about this. This would be going the next budget cycle, so. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we're good. I'm not going to ask you for anything right now, <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, we that, that's part of the planning for uh, for December. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have for today. All right. Does anyone else have any questions for me? No. I know you have, like, 15 items. Yeah. You have a question? Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. Jamie Jarrett. A question for Carrie is if she can give us a brief uh, 
analysis of pros and cons of a charter. You um, right now? <laughs> if she can. Well, I mean, she's, I mean, briefly, she's been it. Well, I will tell you what the economist told me when I talked to him last week to find out one if he was still working if he did part time work for us here. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot. We can hear you here, but the no, no, I didn't. We just um, so I did talk to Jeff Carr about this um, last week, and he said to quote unquote. I don't understand why every town in the state of Vermont isn't doing this already. Um, there are very few cons um, to answer your question. Um, it's it does cost initially a little bit of time for business owners because they're going to have to upgrade their software. But I worked pretty closely with Sharon AC from the tax department and she's wonderful. I mean, I had her direct line. She's one of the supervisors for the Department of Taxes. Um, and she worked really, really well with with the municipalities businesses. Um, the con was at that point that we had shared a zip code with St. Albans City. So we had to work through um, a couple of businesses charging that when they shouldn't have because they just thought they were in the town, but they weren't. Um, I know kind of interesting, like you didn't know what municipality you were in, but you know, we care so much about our municipalities and I don't understand that part. Um, so the cons are education because people don't understand it and assume that tax is a negative term. Um, it's a broad based tax. So the, con the, the beautiful pro is it's the burden is small for a lot of individuals, but it's spread over this huge array of people. So there isn't a lot of individual pain. I think Jamie was asking about the charter per se. Oh, correct. A pro oh, con about the charter. The charter? Yeah. Jamie, every town should want a charter. In Vermont, we're a Dillon's rule state, so we can only do what the state actually allows us to do in writing by statute. A, ta a charter gives your town uh, some degree of a modicum of self of self governance. So a charter lets us govern our, our ways. Way we want to as opposed to what the state only allows us to do it lets us fill in the gaps for the state says we need x y and z our charter can say well we're going to do a b and c too and if that passes that's okay so what's, what's the cons to that so i don't see any con having a charter other than cost cost to get it going yeah there's pros and cons all yeah i don't see once you have a charter i mean the cost the con would be the work and cost needed to get a charter and it has to be approved by the legislature. They've been famous for not approving charters, which I agree with the proposal to keep it limited, to keep it specific purpose. But other than the cost and the, the work to get a charter, there's not a conduct on a charter. That helps. Car Carly's iPad. Um, Kathy Chafee, Copley Avenue, Morristown. Um, I just want to say I do wish, I do, I do hope that you have at least one um, citizen um, on, on your board. Um, it, I think it's important to have the input. So if somebody wants to ask, it's just a spokesperson for us. So I hope that you do add one there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's good, thank you. Moving on, number six, approve a three-year contract for COFAX software. <laughs> Tina Sweet, Finance Director. Um, I'm coming to you to ask you to consider approving COFAX software for three years. It's an accounts payable software that will allow businesses or whoever wants to bill us to send us bills electronically and it will be scanned into a scanning system that will then automatically go to whatever department head for electronic approval and then get sent back to us and we will just put that in our system and pay bills. It uh, eliminates a lot of time and effort because everything's electronic. You don't have to print everything out. And it also is an easy retrieval because our auditors or anybody that needs to can see the actual bill on the screen without having to dig through files and whatnot. Um, we do have the money in the budget. It's uh, it's going to be a little under sixteen thousand this year and a little under sixteen thousand next year because they're splitting the um, startup cost amongst the two years and in the third year it will be forty eight hundred dollars and then from that year after it'll be under five thousand dollars which it'll save way more time than that. Um, 
Uh, you have some information in your packet. Does anybody have any questions about that? The only, I guess the obvious question is software like this is going to free up a lot of time on your part. I hope so. And uh, would probably free up overtime that we would otherwise be paying to get <laughs> You're not paying me overtime anymore, <laughs> so that's free. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Stacy, a lot of her job is just inputting bills and chasing down invoices and, and that kind of thing. And I'm hoping it will free up her time so that she can do some more projects and learn more about the stuff I have to do. So if I'm out, she can fill in. But the way things are now, if we don't do something different with the software, I don't see that ever happening. So I think that it's a good solution. We went to St. Albans City and saw this in action and they said they love it. So I just thought I would bring it, would, it to you. It would bring our financial department into the 21st century. Yes, it would be nice. It would be nice. And as you said, the money's in the current budget. For it is. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Laura? Yes, I, I'm. I'm just curious because um, I'm. I'm definitely would like to see everything happening in a budgetary cycle, um, and especially since at this point we're so close. So I'm curious as to where this is currently in the budget, um, and how it, you know, will affect the budget going forward. And again, I I want to try to get. Every, I would like to see everything going in a budgetary cycle. I understand we need this, but. At this point, we're really close. So, can you explain where this is currently that it's we, money's already allocated? The money is sitting in a uh, line item called uh, I think I called it either payroll or finance software. Um, the amount of money that was put in there, we did not know which company we were going to go with for our payroll software. And when we got down to it and got talking to different people and what the best option for us was it was extremely a lot cheaper than what we had anticipated therefore leaving money in that line item to accommodate something like this and that's where it is okay that yeah i remember that line thank you okay. so to put that in simple words there's more than sixteen thousand dollars on that line currently yes good yes. thank you can you make a motion I'll make a motion that we approve a three-year contract for Kofax software, K-O-F-A-X. Actually, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve a three-year contract for Kofax software at a price of $15,563 for year one and year two. The third year would be $4,813. And to authorize Jason Luno, interim TA, to sign the contract. I'll second it. A motion by Don, a second by Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion has passed. Number seven, discuss town informational meeting January 6, 2024. So, hi, I'm Sarah Haskins, town clerk. I had brought this concept to the board a while back about um, now that our voters had voted to uh, not have a floor annual meeting anymore, and there, uh, I was receiving a lot of feedback in the community that they were uh, sad that, to miss that discussion, but happy that um, they're hopeful that. Um, there'll be more participation because of it being town meeting that Duxbury had started this community day in January. I reached out to the school, asked for the gym space, explained, you know, what we wanted to do, why we needed to do it, that I was asking for it. Um, very far in advance, I felt that they could move um, school schedules around and they have agreed to let us use the gym that Saturday morning. Um, so I'm excited about that. So they have a lot of questions. They want to know um, what we want since this is a new concept. I have a lot of ideas, but um, I put this on the agenda to see if there's anything specific that that the board wants to see happen there. They um, can pull out the, the bleachers 
will fit about 200 people to pull out one half of the bleachers. They can put about 200 chairs down. That's about 400 people, which is the size of our last um, meeting. Um, Peter Guion has retired from the school, but I've reached out to him and he is available to do audio visual. We just need to let him know what we want. The one thing that they said that they couldn't do is um, the, the, high, the staging that the select board usually sits on to be higher. Um, there, there's not enough time and that takes a lot of time to put up. So the, the, they could put tables there for you to sit, but you'd be at the same level as the community. I said, it's not an election, it's just a, a discussion. I didn't think that was um, an issue, but yeah. so I'm just here for any feedback that you might have about what you want, might want that day. Yeah. So the one thing that when Sarah and I talked a little bit about this, we can't call it informational, right? Or what is it usually called? Um, uh, well, it, I don't know if we can or not. It might be confusing for voters. It's not the official informational meeting because that will have to happen within 10 days of the election. But we're finding more and more people, um, especially as we've mailed out ballots in the past, people are voting 20 days ahead of time and so the bulk of our voters are actually voting before we hold the informational meeting so the idea behind this in my mind is you would present where you are with a budget ask for questions i know that people will get it at all these budget meetings but it's just another opportunity to explain the budget um, we could invite all the social service agencies that we usually do and they could have tables um, so that the community could go around and and speak to them. Um, and then we could discuss anything about the warning that you wanted to put on May, I don't know where town charter will be. Maybe mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to uh, start to bring that up. It's just, just a way to um, have dialogue in a bigger setting than this room. Right. Yeah. I think it'd be a great idea to have the social services groups there to invite them to come in and give the towns townspeople, the voters, a chance to ask them questions and find out where those appropriations are going. I agree. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, just looking at our, our mm -hmm. um, town meeting that we've done, that there's maybe some food available if you want to buy, like that has been done in the past, and made it really um, kind of festive. Yeah, in the past, in the past, the soccer club has used it as a fundraiser, sold food. Um, the I, um, I have had a PA student or two that um, want to work on their public speaking, come and work on the announcements. I've had the middle school come and um, perform. I've, I've tried to get the students involved if I can. Yeah. It's sort of a mini town meeting. Mm -hmm. Minus the voting. Yeah. The other thing, we usually have the representatives from the legislature come. They would only have been in session like a day, so I don't know if they'd have anything to report yet. What day of the week would this be? Saturday morning. They would like us out of there no later than noon. Mm -hmm. So they've asked, oh. yeah, because they need it in the afternoon and they'll need time to set it up. So they, they were asking if we could do it at, 8.30 or 9 earlier in the morning. 8.30 to noon. Or would we have to finish before then? Like 11.30? I, I mean, it's not, it's a discussion. It's not, our town meetings have been ending by 11 in the, the past few years. And that's with actually voting on our budget and voting on all of our officers. Um, and um, the in the past years, we spend about an hour talking to our legislators, and we spend maybe an hour on the whole town meeting. I think it's enough time. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. would um, how would the information be presented? Because we we wouldn't have the booklet, right? The, that available. that was something for you guys to Just figure to out. out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, if we had an audio visual, uh, we could put things up on. Um, screen yeah so the school at their informational meeting always does a powerpoint for like five minutes of key aspects of the budget any big changes so you uh, i'm sure that they could set up some sort of um audio visual right. we, we can have a fact sheet to bullet mm -hmm. point specifics 
things mm -hmm. that um, may be of interest to talk about. Mm -hmm. So would that be something like the PowerPoint, maybe something, um, she's not here, but Judy would possibly put together for it? The administration good mm -hmm. the, regarding the budget. Okay. Well, that sounds good, yeah, to have it, um, to be able, everybody could see it. Thank you for working on this. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's excellent. This will be a, a really good asset for the community. I talked to another town today um, who's also in a similar situation who's thinking about doing the same thing. I think everybody wants to steal what Duxbury's yeah, it's doing. A, it's, it's, well, someone else already said it's a town meeting without the vote, mm -hmm. basically. Well, and, and, and with more and more communities going to an Australian ballot for everything, it, it gives everybody an opportunity to, to be there and ask questions rather than to go through a Twitter feed. Oh. And, and then um, our job is by the 29th of January to have signed the warning. So it gives us a couple weeks if right. we want to change or tweak things. Mm -hmm. Do you need a vote or just no? Nope. I just, I needed to know if there was anything mm -hmm. additional specific that I need to be setting up for because it's the first time. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds very good, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm next. Okay, discuss annual meeting mailing ballots. So um, the other thing when I sent my letter to the um, school asking about the use of the gym, I um, asked them what they were going to do about mailing uh, ballots, what they were thinking about doing. They can say what they want to do, but you as a board have to approve actually what the school um, will do they do not know what they're going to do yet i explained to them when we had the special meeting in june it was very confusing for voters that the town mailed their ballot and the school did not um voters were angry they wanted to know why they had won why they didn't they it, it was a lot of confusion um and so I brought it up to them. I'm bringing it up to you. I, um, I'm just recommending, if at all possible, for consistency for voters um, that you guys try to do the same thing. But um, for, for me, working with Tina and the budget, I need some guidance. If you're thinking about mailing all your ballots again this year, you have the past three years. Um, if you're thinking that you don't want to um, mail the ballots, um, because I'll need to order supplies and or uh, talk to a company about mailing them if we're going to mail them. So and then, and also March is going to be primary. March is a so presidential primary. The primary ballots will not be sent out. They will not. So um, the March presidential primary, federal primary, all voters will have to declare what party um, right. ballot they want to vote on so therefore we can't automatically well the state can't automatically mail them because we don't know what we don't declare party in Vermont so we don't know what ballot people will want so this is only for the local ballots I guess my thoughts on this are um, you know since we've mailed out ballots we've been able to observe a very good turnout on the part of the voters and every time we've mailed out ballots, we've gotten a much larger turnout than we had seen in previous years. 2013 through 2019, we only had one year where there was over a thousand votes cast, and that was in 2016, the presidential year, and it was 1,076, so barely over a thousand. Every year that we've mailed out ballots, we've had over a thousand. In fact, one year we had over 2,500. So. I, for one, would like to see us um, mail out ballots to everybody. I mean, the voters are responding. We're getting voters. We're getting people to vote. I mean, that's what's more important than, than finding out what the community wants than trying to maximize the number of people that, that vote. We've got, uh, we've got no reason to think that there's any fraud going on here. Um, and when you do the math for the number of registered voters in town, we're talking like a little over $2 per registered voter. As I said to Sarah this morning when I talked to her, that's not much more than I pay for my refill at Maple Fields every day. So I think it's money very well spent. 
uh, getting a response from our voters is, is, is really important. And you know, the state may do something different, the federal government may, may decide to do something different, but we are in charge of our own municipal elections, and uh, I think this is one way of maximizing the number of people who show up at the, at the polls. I so, second so that motion. I'm, I'm for, I'm for mailing I second that motion. Do you need a motion? <clears throat> I will need a motion. Yeah. Uh, Laura? She's, you want to She's muted. Did you get an idea on what the school was planning on doing? No, they so, just they they just said that they acknowledged that it was con, it was confusing okay. for voters, and but I haven't heard anything back. Okay. Do you, you want to voice your opinion or not? Well, that that's my that's my question. I'm I'm. I'm in agreement, but I'm curious about the like the, the lack of continuity with school. I'd like to figure out how we could make it consistent with the school so that we're we're getting everybody on the same page for their votes. And then the school is slightly more complicated, more or less than a year ago, but it's also Elmore. What's Elmore going to do? Right. And the Elmore's voting right now about um, whether or not they're keeping a town meeting or they're moving to Australian ballot. So I don't think Elmore knows yet what. <laughs> their town will want to do well one way to get ahead of that is to send a message to the school board that the select board is very interested in mailing ballots to everybody and come join us off in the envelope with us i feel a real responsibility to the <clears throat> to the registered voters here in morristown and i think there's a number of voters that wouldn't vote if it didn't come to them just because they don't have transportation they don't you know they're elderly or older um and i think that you know in fairness to um, all considered um giving everybody the opportunity um you can lead a horse to water you can't make them drink but at least they have the ballot in hand and and i think that the data supports it so i think the message to the school is is this is what we're going to do and we'd encourage you to do it as well uh, laura oh, i totally agree um you, you know we've done it for the last three years and we have to do it and we need to lead the way and hope the school joins us I'm I'm the lone naysayer here because it's it's expensive. I just think it's a democratic process, and this is one of our responsibilities as a citizen of this country is to get out and vote. And if you want a ballot, you can call the town office and you get one sent to you. You don't have to have it delivered in the mail to every single person in the, in the town. And um, it's confusing because we have a primary. The ballots will not be sent out in the primary to be able to come in here anyhow. I don't know how many people come in and they forget their ballots. They have, they have forgotten them at home. I understand that that happens. And um, it's just one, that's the only thing you have to do is show up at the polls and vote and the ballot is here for you. So I'm, I'm a lone dissenter. Well, and I, <clears throat> along that same line, you can call Sarah and get the ballot mailed to you. Yes, and you if can. you're not, if you, and if you reach out, you can have members of the BCA bring the ballots to where you are That's on the great. day of voting. Um, so I'm kind of in Judy's corner there. It's been, I understand the thought of that and the fact that we have had an increase in voter turnout. But I think Tony made a comment, if you want to vote and you want your voice heard, then you need to show up and and do your, do your part. Um, so I, I'm kind of not wishy-washy on that but i'm right i'm right in the middle i can see both sides of the pros and cons of of but the ten thousand dollars is money we could put somewhere else so we have a motion and we can open up for discussion i'll make a motion that we um for the march 2024 annual meeting that we mail all registered voters in morristown a ballot I'll second that. Okay, motion by Don, a second by Chris. Uh, any discussion? One up. Did you want to read the Dennis, first of all, well, Dennis DiGiorgio, taxpayer of Morrisville. I disagree with that. And you say it's two bucks. Tell you what, 
I'll give you two bucks for every meal back valid. You give me two bucks and don't come back. We spent $30,000 last year. <laughs> These taxpayers bitch about a 10, 15, $20,000 point item. I'm just saying, I agree with Judy. When I worked with Ed, they've hand delivered them. So you have our money. This is the one thing I don't agree with, and I'm very verbal about it. That's it. Thank you. I do oh, have a. Do you want me to read it? I'm Barry Russo. Um, excuse me. I'm very much for mailing out the ballots. If you didn't have any history of a thousand per year for a decade, and then after that you've got uh, increases by 50, 75, 100% to offset that, uh, there's your proof right there that it's working, it's worthwhile. Unfortunately, you're right. People should get off their butts and come in and vote. But it's been proven that they don't, that you're more likely to get a more accurate sampling of the way the community feels by acknowledging that they're lazy and putting the ballot in their hands. That's the way I feel about it. Hi, Alex here. I live here in Morrisville. I was just wondering, so I understand that the federal primary ballots won't automatically be mailed out. Is it possible to request that at all? Okay, so that is have to come in person. Thank okay. you. No, you can't. Wait, can you ask? No, you can. He's asking if the pro, the primary ballots can they be sent out? Or like, if you yes, but you have to um, individually request it. They won't automatically be mailed. Okay. So you have to email me, call me, fax me, stop by, and say, "Give me either the Democrat, Republican, or Progressive, whatever ballots." You have to you have to initiate the conversation. You but can, you can vote early. You can declare. And and the the federal ones are forty five days ahead of time, and the local ones are only twenty days ahead of time. So it's two different mailings. Yes. Yeah, you can come in and vote in the office too. That answers my question. <laughs> so I have a letter from one of our townspeople. He asked that this be read tonight. So some voters thought we had voted to have the annual town ballots mailed out to all residents every year. This is not the case. We voted to have the annual budget included on the Australian ballot. Each year, the select board must decide if they are to be mailed out or not by state statute. You, the select board, will discuss whether or not to mail out the town ballots for the upcoming March elections, which does include our town budget to be included on the Australian ballot. The state will not mail out primary election ballots this year. It is unclear currently whether the school ballots will be mailed out. I do not know of a better way to spend taxpayer money estimated at $10,000 than to assure the maximum number of voters have a say and input on the March ballot. With a budget approaching $10 million, we expect nothing less from you, our select board, than doing the utmost to assure all Morristown residents get the opportunity to ex express their wishes. Below is a comparison of the number of residents who voted in non-mailed out years versus mailed out years. I've got all the years here if anybody wants. There's about 15, 16 years of data there. I, I alluded to it before. I respectfully request this email be read as part of the agenda discussion at this Monday's meeting, as I will be unable to attend the meeting, respectively, Tom Cloutier. Is there anyone else who wants to join the discussion? Tony, you'll be next. <clears throat> Christy Snip, um, it took us three tries to pass the budget. It cost us around $30,000. I'm in favor of um, personal responsibility and getting people to take their duties seriously and show up to vote. Um, and mailing ballots is one way to encourage people to participate, but are there other ways that wouldn't be on the backs of taxpayers that we could get out the vote and um, get a higher turnout. 
Thank you. Uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill, Morrisville. I'm kind of split in the middle here. I agree with you, Don, on these mailing out the ballots, but I, I think it trended down uh, on the last vote, did it not? Did the numbers, as, as we went through the budget process, the numbers fell. So I... No. Close, but not. This column here? Yep. Over here? Yep. In, yeah. So, so it was, was close, yeah. It was close. In March, maybe the first that, vote um, was. Maybe you're looking at absentee. No, 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 no. I was, I was, total, total was higher in August than June, but that absentee in June was higher than August. So the total is just for the Zoom people. March was 1883. June was 1586, but August was 1631, so it went back up. So it's, it's but it, it went down and it's went around 1700, give or take. So I, I think we ought to just keep an eye on that, see where that goes in the future. But I think we should mail them out one more time. Thank you. Any other discussion? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Jamie Jarrett, uh, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, your motion there that it should be mailed out. I do have a question though, was regarding those numbers, are those mailed out numbers or are those responded numbers? Total. Responded. responded. They're responded yeah. numbers. Those are total votes, I believe. Yeah, it's a response. Oh, total votes. So it's not mailed out as per what that email you wrote it said mailed out, it should have said Received. returned. Yeah. Right. So those are the total number of people who voted. Some of those people didn't mail back their votes that came in and voted. Which is okay. I yeah. mean, right. to get 1,800 people to be involved is tremendous. Exactly. And people have no no reason to complain about things. Um, Evelyn Throne, Marsville. Yeah, I totally agree with the idea of sending it out. I, I don't want money wasted, but there is such a thing as money spent. And I think this is more of money spent. Um, I was a committee person in Pennsylvania for years. The difficulty that they made it so that we couldn't, you know, the, the, the artificial limits that were put on it and the difficulty you know uh you had you had to write why you were mailing in an absentee ballot you know you were and then people worried that they wouldn't get um you know that they would ask their doctor if it was true you know or or they would get caught in town if they didn't actually go out you know there were so many impediments put in the way and i it's it's a breath of fresh air to be here to where the one thing that you're going to do, and, and I do object to the idea to a little bit, not, I, not, I might not object, but the word lazy, okay, you know, maybe they're not taking their responsibility, but people are overwhelmed. People can become overwhelmed, and they have a lot of things to think about, but this is one less thing that they have to think about. They have to think about how they vote, and hopefully they'll look into it, but they'll have that with them. So I think it's, I think it's money well spent. I think the other point that we want to make here is that this isn't in perpetuity. This is a decision for just this March town meeting poll. So we're ready for, we have a motion on four. Uh, Jamie Jarrett, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Laura. Uh, yes. Two, two nays. So three. So three one. Thank you. Delinquent tax sale. What? Three names. I'm sorry. Three names. Two names. Two names. Two names. Two names. Sarah Haskins now a delinquent tax collector. So um, I brought to you in September the list. Of, there were 23 names of taxpayers that were delinquent. Um, now uh, we are down to eight. There are four, um, four uh, properties and then four unlanded mobile homes. 
in the past, um, what we've done is uh, turned anything that's over a thousand dollars to tax sale collection. Um, Jim Barlow has estimated that it's cost between eight hundred and nine hundred dollars, roughly, to um, um, have a tax sale. So under a thousand dollars is not worth um, that, bringing somebody. To that's tax per sale. parcel. Per parcel. Right. Um, so my recommendation would be um, there's three properties on the list that are um, actually over three thousand dollars, and those are the um, three that I would recommend. I had a really nice conversation with him um, this week and talking about um, our, our delinquent tax sale policy because there's been discussion um, about potentially changing it um, or asking him if there's anything that he would do differently. And he said, um, absolutely not, that actually Morristown is a model policy. He um, wishes more communities would um, conduct delinquent tax sales like we were. He thinks that other people should um, change their policies and procedures how we do things. He could not believe how low um, that we only have $17,000 in delinquent tax sale to collect. He said is unheard of for a community. And um, so he just said he doesn't recommend making any changes. That's basically your policy, right? Well, this this I um, this is my one position that I have that I'm appointed. I'm not elected, so it's it's our policy. <laughs> so, do you need a motion on this tonight? I would need a motion to and, to do these three parcels and to hire Jim Barlow. Okay. I would move to uh, move forward with tax sales on the three. Um, properties um I, I can do them by parcel id if you want i would just to. say over a thousand dollars for over a thousand dollars um and to engage uh, attorney jim barlow in the process for the sale i'll second that so welcome by chris and second by uh, richard um any discussion all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. motion is passed <laughs> Number 10, adopt Vermont alert as a public safety notification system. So after the flooding, we one of the things we realized was, was uh, we had a difficult time getting out to the public. VT uh, alerts managed by Vermont Emergency Management, a lot of communities utilize it. What it would allow is for anybody to sign up um, in the community to sign up on the app. And if there was a flash flooding, we could contact, uh, there'll be two of us, myself and Andrew Glover, We'll have uh, we'll be in charge of this, and if there's an emergency, we can get on right what the emergency is, and it'll be a mass uh, text message. It'll get blasted out to everybody that's signed up. It could be used anything from a flash flooding, active shooter, any type of emergency. Um, part of uh, signing up for this is there's a bunch of training that we have to do, but we also need an MOU signed by the select board chair that talks about who will be managing it from the municipality and that the uh, select board chair is, is just giving us permission to move forward with it so uh, a motion i would move to um, approve the vermont alert implementation process and um, uh, have the chair of the select board be authorized to sign on the municipality's behalf i'll well, second it's a motion by chris and a second by uh, don and any discussion? Um, Jason, is there any cost to this, or is this just a process? Uh, it's a, yeah, the, everything's covered by Vermont Emergency Management. Okay. So once we sign up for it, it passes and we sign up for it, then we somehow let the public know, like probably on the website or something, they can go in. Yeah, we're going to, I think we're going to do it. Judy and I have talked about it, possibly doing a link on our website to, to point you in the right direction to sign up for it. So there'll be some education on that, but excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Number eleven, approve hiring full time patrol officer Jackson K. Alberti Schroeder. Yep. So Jackson applied to the police department back in uh, September time frame. Went through the hiring process and uh, was offered and accepted the job. 
Uh, Jackson's full-time certified, so level three certified police officer, currently works at the Capitol Police Department in Montpelier. And so after about three months of field training, Jackson will be able to actually be out and work um, by himself. So the start of, or the rate of pay will be $29.38, and the start date will be November 20th, 2023. And this is factored into our into the budget. Yeah, this will be filling our uh, last vacant patrol officer position, which is part of the budget. I would, uh, I would make the motion to approve the hiring of Jackson Cade Alberry Schroeder as a full time police officer at a rate of twenty nine thirty eight per hour with a start date of November 20, 2023. I'll second that. So Chris made a motion and Richard seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 This passed. And any old business? None. None. Approval of warrants. Okay. I don't know if we've had a chance to sign yet. I'll just come back to that. I, I would I'll make, make a motion. motion to I would make a motion. Yeah. Okay. So we make a motion to approve the warrants. All right. Good. I can't have a mo Who made the motion? I did. Chris, I'll second. Chris made the motion. Don seconded the motion. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Laura? I'm going to abstain because I can't see them. Okay. All right. My abstention. Um, did you get the motion? Like, you didn't make the motion? I forgot to tell you. Motion to approve the one. Yeah, but I don't know. Chris and Don. Chris, Chris did the motion. Okay. Don seconded it. All right. <laughs> Any department head reports? It's a race. <laughs> Kevin Barrows Highway Superintendent. Uh, one of the biggest things I want to bring up tonight is we've sent out a mailing to the people on the top of Moran Loop above the uh, steep hill above the covered bridge at the bottom. Um, we're contemplating closing that road for the winter. It's been closed in the past um, and we actually closed it last year after we put a truck on the side due to the treacherous icy conditions up there. So we've sent out a mass mailing to those folks up there to ask for any opinions, their thoughts on whether or not they would be all right for, with us doing so. So that's just to bring this for FYI in front of the board. Thank you. And Kevin, it's worth noting that our EMS and our fire and our police would avoid that hill. Yes, I mean, it, we're talking to Bill and Corey and, and Benny and even PD. The only reason they go on that hill most of the time is because there's an accident on the hill. I mean, the ambulances had times where they've had to park either at the bottom or the top and walk to the site because they couldn't drive the vehicle there. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Any of oh, Todd? Not so much department report. I had my hand up earlier, but I'm Don sorry. called the question on the road. Yeah. I don't think you can apply the current road policy to someone who's already in the process. They're grandfathered under the old policy. You may have, want to have a discussion with Copley about the road policy and what they applied under. Okay. They should be grandfathered under the old policy. All right. How does that affect anything we did? Well, they, does it make it move? I, I mean, I, I like to see the history of their conversation. Um, if they didn't come before the board and make the request um, prior to a month ago, then I don't know where the where the uh, grandfathered would come in on that. I believe. I mean, they had a conversation with administration, but they never came before the board. At least the intimation tonight that um, they had publicly requested the road to be taken over. They had conversation with the administration and the, unfortunately yeah, they don't recall. I just so, want to put that put that out there. The I think they've come to the board too as someone who's been here for a long time that this has been going on for many years. And I just the whole way this that went down tonight with the kind of the scare the scare thing with the road and that wasn't really proposed. The review under the wrong policy. I was just worried the next step for them is court. They'll go to Superior Court and before we spend tax money on this you may want to get a legal opinion make sure we did it right before we end up in court on it because i'm pretty sure they'll go there that's all i wanted to say okay good. thanks good information. thank you we learn something new every day 
Sarah Haskins now up as town treasurer. Uh, just want to remind everybody that taxes are due November 15th. Thank you, Sarah. Um, any other um, department head reports? Town administrator's report. Just a couple things. I really met Carrie tonight. Uh, she's been great. She brings a wealth of uh, municipal knowledge that's been very welcoming. Uh, she does have a, probably four different projects that we've assigned to her. And, and as they come in, we've been, uh, we're just kind of triaging them. And if it's something that needs to be dealt with, we'll uh, send it her way. But she's been a great asset. Uh, thanks to the town highway guys who worked on Halloween. They shut all the roads down in the village. There was uh, quite a few trick-or-treaters out. And then lastly, the budget talks have been going on for about a month and a half now with department heads. Uh, we pretty much got everything wrapped up. Uh, next week is the first uh, public meeting on the budgets, which will be fire, police, and EMS. That's it. Any questions for Jason? Uh, Jan Paris, when will that meeting take place, Jason? 5.30. Uh, um, next Monday. Next, oh, next, oh yeah, yeah, the 13th. Yeah. We're, we're meeting yes. probably 12, the first and third Mondays are going to be select board meetings, and the Mondays in between are budget meetings. Okay. But we're only meeting next Monday for budget, and the rest of November we're not meeting. But December, definitely going forward. Um, I don't know about January. I can't remember what the calendar says. But we'll let you know. I'll have, uh, when, when Judy gets back from vacation, she can put the schedule on the website. Maybe it's already on there. I'm not 100% sure. I think if you look over here, um, did we have a meeting on the 27th? Yeah, so. Was I wrong about that? It's, yeah, it's the budget on the, tw the 13th is the emergency services, the 27th, maybe it's highway, I'm going off memory. Uh, fourth is a regular meeting. Eleventh is, I believe, general government library, and then eighteenth is a regular meeting. So there's there's your yeah. visual. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other department heads? We'll, look, we'll do community comment concerns. We'll do community comments. Do you have a question for Jason? Yeah, I have a question. Oh, you did. Okay, come on up. Jerry Throne Morrisville. Uh, I'm on the TAC committee, and uh, we had a meeting last week. So and uh, Transportation Advisory uh, Committee. And uh, one of the things that we uh, talked about was uh, the use of brine material on the roads uh, rather than uh, starting out uh, before a storm and just putting the granular salt on, on the road. And it seems to uh, uh, save a lot of salt. Uh, wondering if you have any thoughts on that. It's funny you bring that up because I had a meeting this morning with the highway department about salt brine. Um, you know, right now we don't use it. And we they did go to a training last week or the week before in Hyde Park uh, regarding salt brine. Uh, it's, you know, something we're committed to right now, but we're kind of exploring it to see whether or not it will be a cost savings for us. Okay, on to select board comments. Laura, I'll start with you. Um, okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank the fire department um, and police. Uh, I know they've had a busy week with some major fires out of town and uh, pretty amazing the work they've done in uh, saving buildings and things. Um, <clears throat> second thing is I uh, have spent uh, time researching the exact path uh, and the expenditures of the ARPA money. Um, and I have tracked it all uh, and have a narrative to explain exactly what has happened so everybody can be clear. Um, I will release that the last component is to talk to Edward Jones uh, about how it's invested uh, so that I can present a full picture uh, so I just want to know everybody, let everybody know that's what I've been working on. I've also reached out uh, because I'm on the uh, Morrisville Developmental Fund to find out where that is, um, how much money is there. I, I want to make that money accessible for our businesses, um, but it's kind of in a holding pattern. 
Um, so that's what I have been working on. And I did want to just mention um, for those uh, that don't quite understand, Vermont uh, uh, League of Cities and Towns really is all of our select board training and uh, jurisdiction, and they are on call for us almost, you know, anytime we have questions. Uh, they have lots of policies and things set up, uh, tremendous resource for us. They have workshops. I actually took one on municipal budgeting, which was incredibly, uh, in, you know, informational. Uh, but I also saw just today on front page forum that the Vermont State Ethics Commission um, is having three days of uh, municipal ethics meetings where they want to hear from everyone, um, you know, comments on um, your municipality's ethics. So that's a great opportunity uh, for people to voice um, their concerns about our local ethics. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Sarah for uh, the, the good get of getting the uh, the school for an informational meeting. I think that that's a really, it's, it's been a challenge to get cooperation with the school in recent years for, for a lot of things. So I really appreciate that, Sarah. Thank you. Chris? Uh, I'm all set, thanks. Don? Uh, three things. Um, just wanted to make sure it was still on our uh, plate of things to think about coming out of the village um, meeting with the village trustees and the select board last week, the town plan. Uh, it would be great to get that town plan amended. It's my understanding that there's very little that needs to be done and to uh, then make ourselves available for grant money through downtown designation. Presently, we're missing out on a lot of grant money because our town plan has a couple of lines in it that LCPC would rather not have there. And I'm more than willing to get rid of it. So uh, I'd like to see that stay on our agenda and move forward. Uh, also at the Village Trustees Select Board meeting last week, um, we talked about getting another meeting together with the trustees and inviting our legislators. And it would be nice to be able to do that before the legislative session starts in January. I don't know if that's possible, but um, I'd like to see that happen. And the third thing, uh, last week I met with, this has to do with the oxbow and the flooding this summer, and it has, has to do with the replanting of trees down the oxbow. Last week I did uh, have a little site visit with Peter Danforth. Peter was the individual who came in here and requested the uh, select board support the idea of planting trees in the oxbow. We had representation there from LCPC, uh, Dan, our Dan McLaughlin, our representative, our town representative that we appointed, as well as a staff member, Jim Pease from the Morristown Conservation Commission. Uh, there was at least one state employee, <coughs> myself, and some individuals from Hyde Park there as well. So I uh, just want people to know that that's moving forward and uh, there, well, we'll see where we can go and hopefully we can get some tree planting done there, done down there in the springtime to help protect our oxbow. Sure. Thank you. And um, LCPC, Loyal County Planning Commission, um, when we talked about that and the town plan, it wasn't LCPC that voted it down, it was the, the board of directors, so just to be clear okay. on that. And uh, it's something I'm... But it was the LCPC with. board of directors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's their representatives from the communities in Loyal County. So that's who's on the board. Um, but I'm looking into that and working on that. Great, thank you. Um, community comments. James Brewster, um, I sent you all an email this afternoon. Some of you may have received it, uh, read it, uh, but I think it's important enough that um, I've come and I've, uh, I've stayed two and a half hours uh, to make these comments. Um, I think the hiring process of the HR director at this time uh, is not prudent. Um, I think that there should be a hold put on that uh, until after a town manager has been hired. Um, I think that, ugh, geez, 
if only out of respect to this person who we hire as a town administrator, to, excuse me, town manager, to then be hiring the person that would be working for them underneath them. Um, I think we're putting the horse before the cart by hiring this person. Um, I also think that you know we're, we're putting the horse before the cart in terms of hiring this individual before what a lot of folks have asked for, which is an audit of the town in terms of do we have the positions that we need? Do we have too many? What is the organization uh, of our employees here? Um, I would add that um, I'm not sure whether uh, an HR director is the correct position. Uh, with the title director comes a pretty lofty price tag. Uh, we may be more interested in an HR generalist uh, than, than a director. Uh, when we're hiring a town manager, uh, we're supposed to be hiring somebody that comes in with some amount of HR uh, experience, which is what I believe we've been told when we talk about town managers here. Um, so I do understand wholeheartedly the extra workload uh, of the folks in this office, this building that are that are carrying the weight of the duties since we do not have someone in the HR position right now. I fully understand that. Uh, but I think to press forward with hiring uh, or looking to hire an HR director at this time, uh, I just don't think that we're going to make the best decision that we can um, without uh, a new town manager in place. Um, so I just felt it was important to say that, get that on the record. Um, and if anyone feels like responding to my email, please do so. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Can someone else have their hand up? Yeah, uh, tell me, Cody, Cody Hill. I agree with Jamie 100%. We shouldn't be hiring anybody other than maybe a few cops to keep us safe. But uh, let's give a town manager uh, some respect and maybe he wants to hire his own people and uh or she yeah i'm sorry yeah yeah it's politically clerk yeah um but uh that goes along with the budget too let's 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 start being responsible a little bit and there's no need for an hr director right now until that guy gets on board or she Christy Snip. Um, the downtown designation is something that has been thrown around for, I feel like, years. And um, I just wonder if anybody can speak more specifically about what we get if we are a designated downtown. What are the pros and cons, and why has this been such a controversial issue? And um, I keep hearing that we're missing out on a lot of money, but nobody's really put any numbers together or specifics around that? Does anybody have more information? I have Thank something you. I can, it's not with me. I have with me, I share it with you. I can have it at the next meeting. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I think we all got a copy from Trisha Fowler, yeah. uh, a bunch of information about downtown designation and some of the grants that we've previously received. So um, either one of us can send that to you via email. Thanks. Trisha would know a lot. She worked a lot. Anyone else? Barry Russo. Haven't changed. Um, it appears that the Dr. Tinker Road discussion has been reopened, revisited by Todd. Um, well, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Could, could I venture a couple of comments on my thoughts? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a first class road. It's well paved, it's well lit, sidewalks, curbs. I think it would be an asset to the town. Um, but if we allow them to do an extension at the end of the road, a right of, the, a right of way to the golf course, it's my opinion because of people that are involved with the ask for that right of way, that they would be more interested in developing housing than getting the road accepted by the town. So if it ever is accepted by the town with that right of way, I think there should be a stipulation put on that right of way that it is only granted as long as the golf course property remains the golf course property, not for the purpose of developing to housing. Uh, did you follow my, okay, thank you. Um, 
Thirty thousand dollars, and I'm now I'm switching subjects on, onto the the ballots. Thirty thousand dollars spent last year. It was an anomaly. We've never had three votes in a year that I can remember. I've been here for sixteen years, so I, I don't think that the fact that we spent thirty thousand dollars on mailing out ballots last year affect the decision about mailing ballots out or or not. Um, and to your point, if you want to have people show up to vote, if we decide to go that way to not, and, and it's already been decided, I know, but um, an incentive would be for those who do show up, pay them to two, the two dollars that we would have spent. <laughs> <laughs> Cash is king, right? <laughs> and one other comment, um, I was down at... Yeah, there you go. And a donut. A good one. Though. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do. Um, Oxbow, I was down there the other day, the garden plot. It was devastated by the flood. And I don't know if anybody has seen it recently, but somebody, I don't know who the town or a citizen or someone has rototilled it. And it looks like there's been a lot of improvements to the soil done. And it's inspiring to see that it's coming back. And I don't make use of it myself, but um, I'm glad to see that we're rising up out of that situation and then moving forward. One other thing, telling everybody that I meet about the benefits of eating dried grapes. There's tremendous, tremendous benefits to that. Um, and my mission, it's all about raising awareness. Now I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best way. Raising awareness. Raising awareness. I'm glad you said that. It went over my head. <laughs> um, out of business. Okay. Yes. Jan Harris, why is it so imperative that this Dr. Tinker Street be taken over by the town? It's such a great highway. What is the upside? I mean, why don't they just want to maintain it for themselves? I mean, is it too much of a burden? What, what's the deal? I don't know if we can answer that question, but you can speculate on your own. And they don't want to spend their money. They want the town to spend their money. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> it's not a business. I don't think so. But I'm speaking myself. Okay, um, I'm going to move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of labor relations with employees to the body will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. I'll second. Uh, motion is seconded. Yeah, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Oh, no. Um, before you go into executive.